Hi guys, Kaiser here, and welcome back to Age of Empires 3 and the Ranked Online Ladder Experience. I am really excited to share this game. I've got a really fun one. Let's go ahead and introduce the situation. We find ourselves on Savannah. Take a look at the map here. We've got two uh, tribal camps here at the north, two in the south. We have a trade route here in the middle. My opponent in the red, Risen88, playing as the Haudenosaunee. And the Iron Kaiser, yours truly, in the blue, playing as the Portuguese. And the Portuguese, I've got to say, are perhaps the ultimate sieve for us Age of Empires 2 players to take in and play Age of Empires 3 and actually be pretty good at them. Now, you might say, Kaiser, why the Portuguese? I look at these, you know, strongest sieve tier lists or most popular sieve tier lists. And I don't see the Portuguese at the top of the list. Why would you recommend the Portuguese? And the reason why is pretty straightforward. The main bonus, even for civilization, that's the other thing too. If you look at the Portuguese, they are most often recommended for water maps, naval maps. And they do have a pretty strong navy. But I don't think that you even need them on a water map in order for them to be strong, for them to be good, and for them to be exactly the sieve you would want for... Um, again, an AoE 2 player, even if you're playing on the equivalent of Arabia, which is what we've got here. I mean, Savannah's a pretty great land map, right? Um, why Portuguese? The main reason why is their main bonus. As you go up the ages, so you go from the Exploration Age to the Commerce Age, the Commerce Age to the Fortress Age, so on and so forth, every time you age up, you get a town center wagon. That wagon transforms into a town center, and it allows you to produce vills out of multiple TCs to get a really solid economy going. Now, in Age of Empires 3, with a lot of the meta civs, it is not necessary with certain strategies to build multiple town centers. It's very common to stay on one TC and to focus in on some kind of rush, some kind of aggression, and building multiple TCs may be seen as a kind of, you know, boomy strat, right? And you kind of have to go out of your way to build those TCs. Portuguese get them for free, and here's the trick. Age of Empires 2 players, you know, we're coming into this game, and we're not that familiar with the, the deck system and the native camps and all of these extra new features of Age of Empires 3. That's something that's going to take time for AoE 2 players to build their um, to kind of build their experience in and, and learn how it works, what the what when's it good to you know invest in native camps, when is it maybe not so great? Um, what should I be doing with all of these new new features, right? But knowing how to do an eco boom off of multiple town centers is you know, built right into the experienced Age of Empires 2 player's wheelhouse. You know, we are very familiar with that, and we know how that works. And on top of that, the other thing that's cool, so getting a second town center in the eight in Age 2 almost feels like cheating. I mean, it feels natural to the AoE 2 player. It's like, it's like the Kumin bonus, except it's free. You don't need to spend any villagers building that second TC. Yeah, we're all about that. So... That is a really, really awesome bonus and fits in very well with what Age of Empires 2 players are already good at. And then, of course, you get another free town center in, the, in Age 3, and it just goes on and on. That is awesome. Um, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what our deck looks like. I've got my deck pulled up, Iron Kaiser Gaming deck for the Portuguese. And uh, in Age 1... I, I have just two decks. Economic Theory, which gives all of your vills uh, a little bit of a just a faster work rate bonus. I think it's pretty nice. Uh, and because we're going to be focusing on a heavy eco game plan, I think this card makes a lot of sense. And then I also have as a backup the Town Militia. Um, notice how it, uh, it, it increases the attack of your Town Center. And you can call out Militiamen a second time. Those two things together. What we're going to be doing, as soon as we hit age 2, we're going to build our second TC very close to the first one. So that way they can kind of protect each other. And it is a great defense against raids. 
I've played a lot of Age 3 where uh, I get hit with some kind of attack, some kind of rush. You know, people obviously know what they're doing. And, you know, my, t my town center gets destroyed 10 minutes into the game because of some musketeer rush or something like that. And having two town centers able to protect each other, the extra militia, the, the, uh, the town center attack firing stronger, those things mean it'll be very hard to, you know, actually take down a TC. And that's the other thing that's nice about the Portuguese, by the way. If you do get rushed down and you have an opponent sacrifice everything to take down one town center, well, you've got a second one. I had a game before this one that went exactly that way. He tried rushing me, threw everything into the rush. He got down one TC, but I, I had a backup. And then I had a whole economy, and he didn't, so I won. Okay. Hodder Nishani player has hit age two. Let's take a look at where he's at. He's down four. He's 14 bills to my 17. So already, eco wise, I have an advantage. That's nice. He's getting up a war hut and a farm. Ooh, a farm. I wonder if he'll be using that right away. It's nice for him that he's able to build it for free, but uh, remember that farms gather food slower than Hunt does. So what you'll see from me, <coughs> and by the way, if you weren't paying attention to what I was doing in those early moves, let me rewind a little bit and talk about that age one. So I put almost everybody on food. Just focus on food, focus on getting up to the next age. That is especially important for the Portuguese because as soon as you hit that next age, you get that second town center, right? So I got almost everybody on food. I did have a couple of people on wood in order to make sure that I could afford a house. So I would take a few, put them on wood just long enough to get an extra house and then go back to food. Everybody's on food. Once I hit the next age and I was going up to commerce age, I took five bills and I put them on gold. You need to do that because our game plan is to rush to the fortress age. And in order to get to the fortress age, I have on the way the 700 coin shipment, 700 gold. But then you need 300 more gold on top of that in order to actually afford the upgrade. So get five on gold and otherwise focus in on food. See? One other thing that you should do, and I, I'm not the best at this. Again, this is not something in Age of Empires 2. Us Age 2 players got to get used to all the abilities and things. The Portuguese Explorer has a really cool... Uh, bonus, which uh, he has a spyglass ability. And what that does is uh, you select the spyglass ability and then you click anywhere in Fog of War and you can see within that Fog of War, you know, where your opponent is. So use that spyglass to try to figure out what your opponent is doing. Uh, by the way, I, I did keep my guys on wood long enough, not just to afford a house, but actually to, to be able to build a trading post. So um, that trading post is in danger right now. It may go down, but at the very least, it's giving me insight into where my opponent is investing his early army, right? So um, in this case, Spyglass, when I used it before, didn't give me anything, but I do know where what he's, what he's building, and that's useful. So that lets me know... I can go ahead and focus in on Cathador. And the, the Cathador, or Cathador, the, the, in, in Portuguese it's Cathador. But uh, I guess in English we just call it Cathador. The Cathador is um, a, the Portuguese unique skirmisher. It is a very, very good skirmisher. And that for me is the main composition that we want to go for. Uh, with the Portuguese. We want to focus on Casadors or Skirmishers, Special Portuguese Skirmishers, and Dragoons. So, the Casadors are that anti-infantry unit. They're, they're going to be really good against the Archers. They're good against Musketeers. Then we've got Dragoons, which are good against Cavalry. And the Haudenosaunee do have pretty good Cavalry, if I remember correctly. And uh, so, they kind of cover each other's weaknesses. And the Dragoon is also good against Siege Units. So they sort of cover each other. And then on top of that, we also have, with the Portuguese, organ guns. Another unit that are very familiar to us Age of Empires 2 players. And they do function similarly. They are uh, very good at wiping out um, blocks of enemy infantry. So, a fun unit to take advantage of. 
I'm getting the marketplace up in order to try to pick up particularly uh, I want to focus and prioritize the hunting techs uh, because we're going to be putting most of our bills again onto food and onto gold in order to afford Casadors, in order to afford Dragoons. That's our game plan in the cast, uh, Castle Age, in the Fortress Age. And uh, I got a couple guys on wood just to be able to help afford those techs and to keep keep house production going. I do not want to get pop capped. I'm at 30 vils. My opponent is at 31 vils. Good for him. Good for him. So he's actually keeping up with me eco-wise, even though I have two town centers. But, on the other hand, I am also halfway up to the Fortress Age, and he's not. So, maybe that's where some of that's coming into play. Alright, so, I've got an option. I'm halfway up to Fortress. If I spend my shipment now... I probably would pick up the 700 wood because I want to make sure that I can afford barracks, stables, you know, kind of these critical buildings in order to get the army going because I know, I'm, I feel like I'm already being greedy. You know, so many games, the opponent will attack you in, uh, you know, at, at the 10 minute mark, the 14 minute mark, something like that. And I just know that the longer I wait to actually build an army, the greater the risk that... You know, nothing happens, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the, the greater the, I'm sorry. The, the longer I wait to build my army, the greater the risk that I get rushed with an enemy army and I don't have anything up and I just get destroyed, right? I, I do have the, you know, the town militia card as sort of a backup just in case on that front. But you want to go ahead and get your own army up as soon as possible. I'm at 33 vils to his 34. I am about to hit the commer uh, the Fortress Age. He has not started on Fortress Age yet. Yeah, I've hit Fortress Age, so this is pretty exciting. And I know, I'm, I'm guessing, from what I saw before, I saw that he was going infantry. I'm hoping that he stays on infantry. He has a stable up, but yes, he is staying on infantry, and that's good news for me. The Tomahawk is... The a heavy infantry, so my scrums are especially good at them against them. The Aena is light infantry, so that's the Haudenosaunee version of a skirmisher. I don't know off the top of my head if they actually get a gunpowder skirmisher unit or not. Help you. But point is, even then, they they are infantry. The the Casadors will do their job. Taking. I, of course, remember, I get a third town center now, and I am flush with food. Now, the trick is, I did go ahead and use my shipment once I hit the Fortress Age to pump out eight Casadors. So now, I had hit my pop cap. I just built another house. This is the trick for me. You want to focus on food and gold, but make sure, too, that you get wood production going so that you can keep uh, building houses and you can afford sort of those critical buildings that you need. Now, I'm moving forward. I've got 14 Casadors versus my opponent here has 10, 10 Bowmen and 10 Musketeer. He's got a numbers advantage. I have a tech advantage because Casadors, you don't get access to them until the Fortress Age. So they are actually veteran Casadors. They are much stronger than the Fortress equivalent, uh, than the, the Commerce equivalent. So I got a tech advantage. He's got a numbers advantage. Let's watch this fight. Get some early shots off. How <laughs> cute! Thinking about running away. Uh oh, more, more bowmen. So now we're dealing with. All right, 13 bowmen versus 16 Casadors. And then you've also got... Okay, he's got 12 versus my 13. I think this is a fight that I'm winning. Take a look at the stats. 
My range attack is 20. His range attack is 12. But the other thing to remember is the War Hut itself has a ranged attack of 30. So right now, I'm actually, I'm 9 is 7. So I'd say I probably won that fight, but then, yeah, he's got two War Huts. I'm getting shot at, and he's, because he's the defender, he's able to reinforce his units much faster than I am. I like his game plan of having two War Huts. He's able to produce out of both of them. Right, that's something that I need to do. But look at this. Organ gun time. Yeah, I, I got a shipment. Oops. Let's take a look at what he did, by the way. Yeah, he's got a bunch of Vil cards. That's another reason why he's able to keep up with me. He's got these Vil cards, and the Portuguese do not get Vil cards. That's why, uh, for my commerce age age up, I prefer uh, the naturalist. Which sends two cards and two villagers. It helps keep you competitive in the early game, Bill wise. Alright, organ guns. Let's do your thing. Yes. Now, he ran away, and I think for good reason. Because. My organ guns would have chewed him. My organ guns plus the cast doors would shoot him up. This is where I make a mistake. Now I've got in my deck dragoons, and I know that my weakness here. If you've got skirmishers, you've got artillery. Your weakness is cavalry, and you need to focus on plugging that gap. I should have sent dragoons, and I should have gotten them sooner. But I thought, you know, I I, I don't want to pull back while I've got an advantage. I want to keep the advantage going. So I'm going to try to attack him. I'm going to try to destroy this trade post. Which, by the way, if you take a look at the map, notice how the map generation kind of messed with me because he's got a trade post in his base and there's a neutral trade post. It did not spawn a trade post in my base. That's a glitch that uh, is ongoing. But yeah, take a look at this. He sent uh, Kanya Horseman, which is basically the Haudenosaunee version of the Hussar. And... He's going to wipe the floor with everything I have there militarily. So, that's no fun. That's all down the drain. You know, I, I killed some units, but... Yeah. Not a, not a good situation. I, I should have pulled them back and waited until I had Dragoons up. So that I could have had a response to this. And then I would have been able to take down the, the TP, uh, you know, without issue. But, the good news, he's got 45 bills. I've got 56 vills, so eco-wise, I'm looking pretty smooth. And I dare say I'm going to keep that eco pressure going. Even after losing my army, I still have a higher score, you know, which clues you into something. And, look at this, I'm heading up to the uh, Imperial Age. I forget what they call it. It's the... Um, let me see, you got Exploration Age, Commerce Age, Fortress Age, and then we're going to find out in a second what this age is. But uh, I'm up to age four. I'm not making the same mistake. I've got ten Dragoons ready. I have an arsenal, and I'm picking up the ranged cavalry caracal tech, which gives them additional range and line of sight, the Dragoons. So, they're going to be pretty good anti-cav, anti-artillery units. And then coupled with that, I've got double barracks. So, I'm going to be able to send infantry and replenish my infantry force as well. I've got more organ guns on the way. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling pretty good about myself, even having lost that early military force. And this right here, you know, I've, I've, this is just the strength of the Portuguese. Being able to leverage multiple town centers, Portuguese are very good at that. And again, if you're an Age of Empires 2 player, like I am, you know, you sort of... I, I shouldn't say... <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, you're an Age of Empires 2 player, and you, you sort of built those AoE 2 skills. I think the Portuguese are a very good sieve uh, for leveraging those... 
those skills uh, and staying competitive. I decide to go ahead and send for my first shipment the factories. You know, you almost always, if you're playing a European Civ, you should always have your factories. And most, most European Civs have two. Some have one, most have two. Uh, send your factories. You, you always want to have them in the deck. And if possible, send them sooner rather than later. The sooner you send them, the more you get out of them, right? Especially because I'm currently really low on gold, and all my, my gold miners have stopped working, so um, that's a pretty good idea. But, yeah, here we go. I, I spent all the gold on cats, of course. How and he's upgraded to Nahota. Elite Bowmen. Now, the Elite Bowmen are now at the same level as my Veteran Casadors. They still have less damage, but maybe their rate of fire is better? I'm honestly not sure about that one way or the other. Either way, I, I know that my Casadors are kind of considered an Elite Skirmisher, so I think that numbers being equal, my Casadors should still win anyway. Not to mention, of course, like that Organ Gun backup, which is nice. I had the wood. I went ahead and threw down a farm. I, I, there's still hunt out there, and you're wanting to take advantage of it. Don't, don't sit on the hunt. But I think it's a good idea to have, you know, to, to start transferring your food production over to farms and not wait until you run out of hunt and say, wait a minute, I've got nothing. What do I do now? So yeah, he, my opponent, he's in the Fortress Age now. Uh, the Industrial Age, not the Imperial Age. The Industrial Age. Okay. So, Risen 88 just hit Industrial. And I get the feeling like I should go on the attack before he can afford any uh, Imperial Age techs. Notice, by the way, too, he's at 49 vils. I'm at 66 vils. That number's going to keep on growing. Yeah, he's a really fond of his bowmen. And I think that works in my favor. I'm shipping five organ guns on top of the two that I've already got. Now, something that might have been a good idea is for me to build a watchtower up here, kind of in the middle, and then set the watchtower to be the military uh, shipment center. So that way, these five would have been right in the fight, and they don't have to run and walk all the way over. All right, here we go. I've got 28 Casadors. He has 45 Bowmen. It's a little scary. Okay, good news, the Dragoons are doing a great job of wiping up that cavalry. I need to rely on my Casadors and my Organ Guns to make this thing happen. Come on, Organ Guns. Yep, that's, that's great, that's great. All of a sudden... Now he's retreating down with 20 organ guns. I'm sorry, 20 Aena archers. I have a couple of mortars. I've got organ guns. I had Casadors. I need more of a front line. Now, I actually went ahead and got musketeers. Uh, that was, I'll be completely honest, I think that was a misclick. I think I was going for Casadors and I misclicked. But... Musketeers is not a terrible choice here. Uh, they are weak against archers, so I think Casadors would have been better. But they've got some good HP. They serve as a good frontline unit, especially if my opponent is going cavalry, which just so happens that he's going cav. And all I need is a frontline for the organ guns, so the organ guns can continue to pressure the archers. I'm going to use the mortars to... I've already. I've actually already knocked out one war hut with the mortars during that fight. I'm going to use the mortars to take out the other war hut. And then, if they survive, I'll use the mortars to take out the town center and get the pressure. 
I'm at 70 bills to his 50, so the eco behind this is really good. Notice that even as I'm fighting, I'm producing more, uh, more Castadors in the back. Organ guns are back here with the mortars. Musketeer serving at that point. So, he, he wants to get the horsemen onto the organ guns. There we go. Now he's, he's decided to commit. He can't afford to lose these archers. But, unfortunately, both the musketeers and the dragoons are pretty good against Cav. So, uh, they should get wiped up. Now, the bad news here is I did just lose my organ guns. He, he lost his horse, but I lost my organ guns in the trade. That's the bad news. Good news is, Casadors are on their way, so you know, how effective will these archers actually be once the Casadors show up? if I remember right. We're down to three, but boy, the archers have been wiped out. Castor's going to do what they can against these guys, but I mean, the Dragoons are really where the anchor cab damage will come into play. And I think he's actually made a mistake by targeting the mortars first. I get why. I think he's wanted to keep his town center up. But it was doomed anyway. And typically, in both Age of Empires games, you want to try to knock out the army first and then go for the anti-building siege. Right? I think I think he would have done a little more damage if he had had his horsemen attack the dragoons first. I'm sorry, the, the Cassadors first, or the dragoons, you know, try to take out the army and then deal with the siege. Yeah, so what do you do? I mean, at this point, all right, you're the Haudenosaunee. You've got a thousand food, but boy, you're kind of low on food. You're low on gold. And uh, I am doing much better as far as that goes. I've got up. Let's look at some of the things I've sent. I, you know, I sent these early resources to get to Castle Age. Sent up this army. I have um, both of my factories out. I shipped the five organ guns. I've got dragoons that I've sent. Just dra Dragoons and Casadors. That's a fantastic combo. And then you've got some organ guns in the backup, too, if you want those. All right, take a look at this. All right. And he went Musket Rider, which is a really bad choice because um, Skirmishers actually do anti, you know, anti-horse archer, uh, light cap. Any kind of ranged cavalry, like horse archers or musket riders, Dragoons. Skirmishers do a very good job against them. The light cannons are you know, very good against infantry, so I purposely pulled back my skirmishers. But the dragoons are very good against the artillery. And here they come. Here come even more dragoons. Just to wipe them out. And at this point, it's like, what do you what do you do? You have no gold. You can't really afford anything. Yeah. I mean, at this, at this point, you, you just lost your, your trade post. So, you know, no more free XP from there. Oof. And now we're in the... Art now, I'm in the eco. He calls the GG. And that's the strength of the Portuguese. I have been finding them a very fun civilization to play. Uh, that again appeals very much to the AoE 2 strengths and the skill sets that you might have learned in that game transfer over nicely to Age, to Age of Empires 3 and the Portuguese. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you liked this one. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, let me know who I should play next. Thanks guys. This is the Iron Kaiser signing out. Have a great one out there.